Welcome, Haley, to the Be The One podcast in our fancy studio. We're so glad you're here. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes. So you are our lower and intermediate school counselor. And so I can't wait to hear all about what you do. But before we get into that, I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself and your family and how you came to Brookston. Perfect. Well, I um, grew up in Atlanta and knew from the get-go that I wanted to be a school counselor uh, when I figured out that science was not my class because I'd always wanted to be a doctor. So then I shifted and decided that going and being a school counselor was what I wanted to do. Um, So that was kind of what I did like all my schooling through. So I majored Mm -hmm. in psychology at Georgia. Then I went to a school called Richmond Graduate University for my counseling degree for professional counseling and um, worked in private practice in Atlanta for three years as a therapist, mostly with young adults and teenagers. Okay, And then... um, I met my husband, Forrest, Mm -hmm. who is a Brookstone alum. So that is what brought us full circle back to Brookstone and to Columbus. But in the interim, we lived um, in Savannah, where I was a lower school counselor there for six years. Awesome. And um, found my heart for for kids. Oh, that's great. So this is your first year in this role. Are you just so excited? Yes. Thrilled and just excited to just get my feet on the ground Mm -hmm. and meet the kids and families and teachers. And so in the way we do it here at Brookstone, it is incorporated as a class, right? Correct. All right. So tell us a little bit about this class. So the class is called Social Emotional Learning, and we'll call it Mm -hmm. CELL for short. And Mm -hmm. the idea of the class is, um, in some ways, it's a backdoor Mm -hmm. to build those relationships Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. if and when a child needs to come in and talk about something that's going on, that there's already a relationship established. Right, right. And in the class, we will have a monthly focus Mm -hmm. for August. It's respect and responsibility. And so we'll kind of, you know, focus on those, uh, what those look like in your day to day, how you're Mm -hmm. already doing those in your day to day. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's what, uh, you know, we'll read books about it. um, We'll have discussions about it. And there'll be other parts of the class that have um, kind of a mindful moment. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that will be Mm -hmm. typically how we start a class where they're able to kind of take a second, do a check in, Mm -hmm. see where they are feeling in their body. Right. Um, Because a lot of the emotions that we feel, we notice them when they're coming out. Right. And we're noticing them when they're already like amped up to level eight. Right. Uh, We're not paying attention to them when they're at a four Mm -hmm. or a five, when we can kind of take a minute to Mm -hmm. slow down and breathe. Right. And reset if we need to. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. That is so true. So you'll meet with our kids. Um, You're going to work with grades kindergarten through fifth grade. Is that correct? 4K. 4K. 4K through fifth grade. And it'll be on a rotating basis. So I'll see everybody every other week. Every other week. And um, just with their class, they'll come to me. So I have Mm -hmm. a classroom, which is Mm -hmm. exciting to kind of have my space. And again, so it's a space they're familiar with. Mm-hmm. If and when they need to come talk right. to me about friends or right. something going on, right? Um, that it's a place that they're comfortable in. Yes, yes, and and even even as parents, I'm sure that you will have parents reaching out, um, asking you questions how to deal with certain situations. Yes, and mm-hmm. especially with being the younger kids, a lot mm-hmm. of what it is is parents coming to talk to me about what's going on at mm-hmm. home or what they're mm-hmm. seeing or things that they have mm-hmm. concerns about or right. just changes at home. Right. Um, a new right. baby coming in or a divorce happening right. or a loss right. of a family member or a pet. Right. right. Um, mm-hmm. So those mm-hmm. are things that, you know, I talk to parents a lot about. Right. Right. So let's say, um, you know, since you're an expert, mm-hmm. pick your brain on giving our parents some tips. Like let's say you have a child who's struggling with um, being in a new school or being anxious about a new school year. Uh, what are some tips? What are some things you can say? This is what you can do at home. This is what we do here at school. So it, it is. It's paying attention mm-hmm. like what your child's saying with that. Mm-hmm. And in that, it might be, okay, do you need a minute? Kind right. of figuring out what it is that they they need right then. And mm-hmm. it might be that they don't need a hug. Right. It could be that they need a hug. Right. But asking them and seeing because sometimes they just want a still moment. Right. Because right. when they're coming to school, mm-hmm. all of a sudden they're not alone at any point during right. the day. Right. They don't really get a quiet moment during the day. Right. And so to be able to give them kind of a quiet space is something mm-hmm. for them to sit with what they're feeling. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. feelings that are uncomfortable are not bad. Right. There's right. something that you're going to feel throughout your whole life. Right. So learning how to deal with those and to sit with those mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and learn how to sit with those in a way that you know you can work through it mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. while the uncomfortable feelings don't feel good, right, they're fleeting, right. just like any other feeling. Right. Right. Um, so being able to give your child um, – I, I remember when I was little, there were these little like acrylic d- 
tubes Mm -hmm. and they had this goo in it and Mm -hmm. the goo would just drop down through this hole and a bubble would come out the top. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I loved having as a child, but it's almost like a timer. And so they can Mm -hmm. sit there and they can watch it Uh and Uh they can kind of just like de-escalate a little Mm -hmm. bit Mm -hmm. or, um, and I guess that's if a child's, you know, really feeling some, some, Right. Strong feelings. Right. Um, but just for the, the milder ones, it might be figuring out what are some small things that you can do. Maybe it's listening to their favorite song in the car on the way mm-hmm. to school. Mm-hmm. Maybe it is they want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and talking about it can be hard because it can be, how was your day? Good. Right. Fine. <laughs> no answer. Exactly. Um, so it might be just like giving them a little bit of space and not bombarding them with questions. Mm-hmm. Um, walks are a good time to have conversations mm-hmm. because you don't have to make eye contact, especially with boys. Right. Um, with girls and boys, the car is a good spot, but mm-hmm. sometimes it's letting them just kind of go at their own pace. Right. Um, right. If you came home from work every day and your child's asking you, how's work today? Was right. your boss nice to you? Right. Was your boss mean to you? <laughs> You're like, stop, stop talking. Right. Like, I right. just want to fix our dinner. Yes. So your child feels the same way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, but mm-hmm. they don't know how to, right. to voice that. Right. Um, so so what, them a minute. what questions, what are the better questions as parents to ask? Ask Not only initially, but like if, if you can sense that something's going on with your child, they're either freaking out, having a tantrum, or, mm-hmm. you know, things aren't great. What are some yeah. questions okay, that so you if, suggest? If they're freaking out and having a tantrum, mm-hmm. just kind of give them a minute. Mm -hmm. No questions. Just kind of let them find a space. You know, if they're at an eight, let them get down to a three or four Mm -hmm. and then have a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. If their brain is on fire like that, you're not going to get anywhere. And you might even make them more frustrated. Right. If they are at a space where you can can talk to them, then it Mm -hmm. might be like, do you have anything you want to talk to me about today? Like, Mm -hmm. is there something on your mind? Mm -hmm. Is there anything I can help you with? Mm -hmm. Um, and they, they may or may not offer anything up, and that's okay. But mm-hmm. other strategies could be asking them if they want to write it out. Mm, um, yeah. And share it with yeah. you or not share it with you. And right. maybe it's something like a, a journal. Or if right. they're younger, maybe maybe having them draw mm-hmm. um, just as an, an outlet for something. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you know, that that then you can ask about the picture. Or if they've written something and they've shared it with you, then that gives you something to right to read and ask them about. Right, right. And then if it is something that's private, you can just ask if they're feeling better Mm -hmm, and, you mm -hmm. know, reminding them that you're, you're there if they need anything. Right, right. And also that, you know, any other adults that they have in their life that you know, whether it's teachers or coaches, um, that they can talk to about it. Just Mm -hmm. remind them that they've got other adults in their life that love them and care about them and, you know, want to hear what's going on. Right, right. Because parents can be hard to talk to. Right, they can, they Mm -hmm. can. And that's one thing I love about school is that there's so many people who are pouring into our kids' lives that Mm -hmm. you can, you can point them to so many different people who are invested in them and that are going to be there for Mm -hmm. them. So um, that's The beautiful thing about a school like Brookstown. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, for sure. Um, so how about, um, shifting from kind of like anxiety at, how about like organization? Ah. How can we help our kids with organization? Well, sometimes it might be the apple and the apple tree. <laughs> so if you struggle with organization, there's a strong chance your child might struggle with organization too. So keep that in mind. That's so true. So uh, let's say how, well, how, how can we best prepare our kids to start the day ready to learn? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I had this conversation with my son this morning on mm-hmm. the way to school. And he, granted, he's in 4K. But, <laughs> um, you know, talk, getting things ready the night before. Okay. Um, you know, like, is your bag by the door or mm-hmm. your shoes by the door? Do we know where everything that we're going to need tomorrow morning is? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. do we have that? Mm-hmm. Um, and being sure that that's set to go. Because mm-hmm. in that way, you're not scrambling at 745 when you're trying to get out the door. Right. It's all just right, right there. Right. Um, mm-hmm. It could be... Um, you know, when you're getting them to school and they have, you know, it might be regular kind of like desk cleanouts or Mm -hmm. locker cleanouts Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. just having them, you know, all right, I need to know where all your coats are. Bring all the coats home that you're hoarding (laughs) in your locker. I know. We need those. They do. They Mm -hmm. leave things here. Yes. Lots Uh of things. I mean, it just kind of becomes Mm -hmm. like a second bedroom. (laughs) And so it's, it's, you know, being sure that they're getting those things out and Mm -hmm. trying to demonstrate and model that for them the best that you're able. Mm -hmm. Um, At Mm -hmm. some point, though, they're going to be you know, moving into middle school. And with that, it's, you want to be sure that you've equipped them with right. the skills to be independent and to kind right. of take personal responsibility right. for their things. Right. For um, 
No, for sure. Okay. Thinking of that, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place, yeah. but um, how important is sleep for our kids? Uh, it's so important. It's so important for everybody, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is. It's having a consistent bedtime. Mm-hmm. Um, it is having a consistent wake time. And that Mm -hmm. goes for anyone and everyone. Mm -hmm. But for kids, it's so vital that they're getting the sleep that they need because Mm -hmm. they can turn into little gremlins. Yes. (laughs) Um, And that, you know, and if you have questions about what an appropriate bedtime is for a child, Mm -hmm. ask. You Mm -hmm. know, it's that, and different things might work for different families. Right. Um, but the idea is that you need to be sure that your child's getting the right amount of sleep. Like mm-hmm. I like to be sure my kids are going to bed early because I get them up earlier mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we have to get to school. Right. Right. Um, and so it's, you know, it, I know it's not a fun time. It's not right. my, my most favorite time at home, but right. putting them in a routine and it's doing the same thing consistently. So their right. body starts to know that right. we're slowing down now. Right. right. It's bedtime now. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, you know, getting those books in, right. or reading time, mm-hmm. um, depending on the age mm-hmm. of the child that they're doing, you know, they're brushing their teeth, they're taking a shower, just getting their bag ready for school the next day, but that right. they have something consistent that they're trying to follow every day. Right, right. Um, and, and does my bedtime at my house look perfect every night? No. No, I know. But it's, you know, it's something that we do strive for. Right. It's a goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Okay, something else to ask about that I'm sure parents have questions about are devices. Oh. What is appropriate an age, and I know this surely can range, but that our children should have, should not have devices? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, this could be heated and there could be many opinions. <laughs> and I'm um, sure, I'm sure there are lots of so opinions. So yes. it's, it's hard because there mm-hmm. will also be exceptions to all of this. Right, right. Um, so I guess I say this is just kind of a general rule of thumb. Mm-hmm. Um I don't think that any age is going to be too late to introduce something. Right. If you're worried about your child not knowing how to scroll or know how to slide something, they'll figure it out. They, that, (laughs) that should not be a reason to pass them a a device. Um, You know, but when I think about phones in particular Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or any device that has texting capabilities Mm -hmm. for a child who, any child, Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of trouble to be found. Right, um, right. There's a lot of ways that they don't know how to communicate mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, is, that, that comes across maybe as the way that they intend it. Right, right. Um, to right. have access to internet, mm-hmm, even mm-hmm. if you think that what they're seeing is safe, mm-hmm. um, can kind of go wayward really fast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that they're exposed to a lot that they should not be seen right. at young ages. Right, right. I would say that for young kids, you know, there will be times where you have a, an eight-hour car ride and you just need them to be quiet and mm-hmm. stop asking, maybe not stop asking questions, but you just right. need, stop arguing. Right. <laughs> okay, they'll they'll have their device. You know, that's not going to sidetrack them forever. Right. But that does not need to be a babysitter. It does right. not need to be where they're learning their stuff. The, right. it, what they're learning needs to come from, trusted sources Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and from teachers Mm -hmm. and from parents. Mm -hmm. And you're also looking at with little ones, they're, they're picking up on so many facial micro expressions that you're making that they're not getting those from the screens. And so to know how to interact with people, the screens really inhibit that. Right. Um, Right. I never thought about that, but it's so true. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so with older ones, I know that you run, it it runs more into like the social dynamics of things. If everybody has it, well, I'm here to tell you, not everybody has it. Might feel that way. Right. Um, But just as you would not hand a 16-year-old keys to a car and tell them to go, handing a child a phone is essentially doing the same thing Mm -hmm. without giving them parameters, without giving them instructions, without giving them regulations and rules around it. Right. Yes. It is um it's a lot as mm-hmm. a parent and to to navigate all these these new frontiers. Mm-hmm. Um but it's true. Mm-hmm. So just praying for wisdom always. Yes. And and that's it. It's you know, I don't know mm-hmm. if there's any one there's no one size fits all to this. Right. You know, right. and I think it's figuring out what works for right. your family. Right. Right. Um okay, so um so any other back to school things is where the start of the school year, shifting back to to tips for parents, mm-hmm. um, if you could give your top two or three things, okay. like back to school tips, like this is this is what I want you to know. Okay. This is what you should do. So class list coming out, like that's yes. always a big thing, and yes. you're looking for that the special people that you just love and adore on that list, and they're not there. Mm. Oh yes. Okay, your child's 
one, going to be fine, Mm -hmm. Um, that it is a great opportunity to look and meet for new people and new experiences with new friends. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. That it might not be the teacher that you wanted. Mm -hmm. Every teacher on this campus adds so much value. Agree. And that 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 might be or might not be the teacher that you wanted but you're also it's it's important to remember that there's a system behind why right the class lists are made the way that exactly. they are exactly yes um that mm-hmm. so much goes into it it is mm-hmm. a it is a there it's almost like a science right. because you're looking at so many different components of what is comprised of a class list right right and just making one change isn't necessarily just making one change right um you know it's it could be because of another child in another class right, and right. the kind of learning environment that you want to create. So right. it's, bi- it's big right. picture. So class yes. class placement's a big one mm-hmm. um, that, you know, your your children will be great. And yes. it's remembering, too, that they're going to have teachers that they might not like as much down the road. Mm-hmm. They're going to have bosses they might not like as much right. down the road. It's so they're going to have people that rub them the wrong way down the road. Right. <laughs> These are all things to remember is, you know, you're setting your child up for the future. You're mm-hmm. not setting them up for third grade. Right. You know, you want right. them to have a great third grade year, but you want them to to be successful way down the road. Mm-hmm. And so all of these are just going to be small things that help get them there. Yes. That's just so true. And the earlier you can learn that as a parent and the earlier you can teach that to your children, it will Mm -hmm. just set them up Mm -hmm. for success in every way. Um, I always tell people when when they, you know, there are some schools to where you do want one particular teacher because that teacher will do X, Y, and Z. But here, there's just such a collaborative um, environment. Mm -hmm. It it just does not matter which teacher you get. They're all amazing. And they're all working together. So you know... Your child is going to be successful in whichever classroom they're placed in. And they're so, learning the same thing. Learning the same and things. They do exactly. so much together. Too. Right. And right. so they will see their little pal, right. you know, somewhere else along the way or, uh-huh. you know, passing by one another in the intermediate school or at right. PE right. or recess. And so there are opportunities. Lunchtime, they sit together. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are opportunities for that throughout the day. Right. But right. it's, you know, it will not make or break a school year. Right. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Um, so, um, oh, can I add one more thing? On yeah, that? absolutely. Friends will change. Yeah. And parents will see that starting, well, I mean, really at any time, but I think a big year is kind of fourth grade, mm-hmm. um, where maybe some friends that you've had for a long time that you're not spending as much time with them anymore. Right. right. And that, again, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and, but it can, it can hurt a parent's heart right. when they're hearing about this lifelong friend is not. Right being as kind or not including them in the way that your child yes. wants them, wants to be included. Yes. And it, it's hard to sit yeah. back and watch that. Yeah. Um, but it's also important to kind of let your child navigate mm-hmm. what what this feels like and be that safe space for them, be a sounding right. board and not being like, oh, that Betty Joe, like I'm going right. to go after her or, you know, <laughs> right. talk to her mom about it. Like right. we're going to talk yes. to her mom. Kind of letting them feel it out and being that safe space for her. Because if Betty Joe does come back around, mm-hmm. You want it to be because that's what the friendship's doing and not right. because it's been kind of a um, engineered. Right. All right. Let's let's speak to that one more time. Let's talk about that. Like <laughs> you were you were because I see that more now than I've ever seen before. Mm-hmm. And and so help us as parents and to nav- how much or not at all do you intervene in your children's social lives to manipulate things or not. Like you just said, I'm just asking you to repeat it one more <laughs> time because I do sense that parents are so, and, and I'm, I'm including myself, this is hard for all of us. When when you see a friendship disappear or you see um, a party, let's say, that your child may not have been included in, um, what is appropriate for us as parents to do? Mm-hmm. Well, I think, you know, we're looking at it. You just said, you know, going to a party. As adults, we know, like, we're not invited to everything. Right, right. And it's easy for us to say that. Mm-hmm. Then you see it happen to your child, and it's like, oh, gosh, but mm-hmm. they should be invited to everything. Yeah. Or maybe it's a friend that you're friends with the family. And, right. you know, that in a community like this, that that's what can happen. Yes. Um, it It is. And it's hard. It is. And yes. It's, and, you know, and I would say that if you're having a party that's everybody but 12 kids, like right. include the 12 kids. Right. <laughs> um, but if you're having something that's small enough, it's not a critical mass. Right. 
then it, it's talking to your kid through that. And it's mm-hmm. it's letting them feel those uncomfortable feelings. Right. Letting right. them know, like, okay, you weren't invited to this one, but there will be others. Right. Um, right. And, and knowing, too, that your worth is not found yes. in an invitation. So true. That is so true. I want everybody to hear that, every child and every parent, because I just – and I think going back to um, our social media world – People know about more things now, and it's just easier to feel left out when it's not always true. It's just not true. We are not constantly being left out of things, mm-hmm. but um, but we have to be able to equip our children to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And I would say that that's the big thing again. Going back mm-hmm. to you know the, the the class list, it's it's we're not we're not preparing our children for the the right now. We're preparing our right. children for way down the road, right? And being right. able to give them the tools to handle tough feelings, right? being able right. to give them the tools to to know where their worth is found. And that's not in a party invitation. It's not in who you're sitting next to at the mm-hmm. at the lunch table. Right. Those things feel good. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, that each of these kids needs to know just like how adored and cared for and loved they are right. by so many people. Right, right. And, you know, that it's hard being a kid. Right. It's so true. Um you know, I think about um, there's that terminology, and I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly. A lawnmower parent, yeah, to where they just want to smooth out everything mm-hmm. in front of their child. Is that a new trend? Have you heard that before? Yes, and you know, because there was the helicopter right. parent, and that was somebody that just kind of like covered. Mm-hmm. And now, yeah, now you're hearing like lawnmower or um, bulldozer mm-hmm. parent that mm-hmm. is. It's just kind of plowing, plowing the way. But our job is not to plow the path for our child. It's mm-hmm. to prepare them for the path. Right. And so um, and so it is. It's, you know, thinking about being intentional with what you're doing. And mm-hmm. that's something that a, a word that like has been coming to me a lot lately is being intentional with everything I'm doing as a, a parent, but also mm-hmm. in the same way, being intentional with what I'm doing as a, a teacher with mm-hmm. these kids mm-hmm. um, and making sure that there's a purpose behind what I'm doing, that mm-hmm. it's um, to help grow them. Right, right. Well, I, you're going to do such an amazing job. I mean, I'm just so excited um, for your role oh. this year. I can't wait. And so you start those classes next week. Is yes. that right? Yes. Yes. So wait. I start next week um, on Monday. Yay. All right. Well, so before we wrap it up, I will always ask people one of um, their favorite books or one of the books that's been most impactful to them or any book recommendations okay. you have for our parents. So like a book that like, gets me to my core Mm -hmm. would be Brene Brown and it would be Daring Greatly or Uh The Gifts of Imperfection. I love Brene Brown. I never read The Gifts of Imperfection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I Mm, love those. I do. I love her too. If we're talking about a book in a series that I love, it would be Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I I, I was 14 when Harry was 14, but I guess a lot of people (laughs) are 14 when Harry's 14. But like the books were coming out when I was 14. (laughs) So I grew up with Harry. Um, and so I don't reread books, so it's not mm-hmm. like I go back and I could tell you all the names of the books, but it mm-hmm. was just I, I can't wait to start reading it with my own kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I That's realized, so y'all, I never mentioned my children. Oh, my gosh, yes. So t- we can we can go back and okay. add them. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your precious children. Okay, so we have um, Forrest, who graduated from here in 2003. We've got... The fifth, Forest yes. Lee Champion, the fifth, and we call him Fiverr. Oh my God, that's so and much. then he's uh, four and a half, and he's in 4K here. And then mm-hmm. we've got Ibby, and that's short for Isabel. And we like to keep, I guess, long uh, names of generations in a family because yes. she's like the ninth or tenth generation Isabel. Oh my goodness. And so um, oh, that's awesome. I know. So we have a fifth and maybe a ninth or a tenth. <laughs> and um, so she's Ibby and she's two and a half, and we hope to have her here next fall. Oh, that's so fun. Well, Fiverr is just adorable, and I love seeing him around campus. They both are, but I love, you will love having them both here because it really is it fun is. seeing them around campus. It's you know, it's really special. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so now um, shifting to advice. Some of the best advice you've been given. Okay. Best advice I've been given is listen to your gut. Oh, well, um, there you go. And that's something I try to like lean into because, you know, they talk about like the little devil and the little angel on your mm-hmm. shoulder. Like that's mm-hmm. your gut. Mm-hmm. Um, when you feel it in your stomach or your tummy, mm-hmm. um, as I talk to kids and it doesn't feel right, mm-hmm. it's probably not right. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. so just paying attention to that, that is your body giving you a signal. Mm-hmm. Um, so listening to your gut is something. And then also best advice I've been given, and it's kind of a funny one, but like take care of your teeth and your feet. <laughs> 
that's <laughs> yes. something that stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's such good, good advice. Yes. Right. Was that given to you by someone in specific? I, well, and that's the other funny thing. Nobody specific. It was, um, I've lived in a family's carriage house in Atlanta in grad school, and it was the wife's brother that told me that. That's so funny. Rob. But, but Uncle Rob. <laughs> Not my uncle. But I love it. I mm-hmm. love it. It's so true. You know, and you only get one set of teeth. So right. yes, you want them I to want to take care be of healthy. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh-huh. So it's not necessarily like counseling advice, uh-huh. but it is just, I think, kind of listening to the gut can keep you out of trouble. Yeah. And oh, I sure. think that, you know, when I think about that age group, it's, it, you know, it works for about anybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so true. Mm-hmm. Well, Haley, thank you so much for being here today. This has been so much fun. Good. Well, this thank you for having me. Awesome. So great. you're going to do great this year, and we cannot wait to. We're going to have you back another time. All right, have me back. I'll come <laughs> back. Thank you. Yeah.